Hello, you joined us for a Geek Force exclusive. I have with us this morning a good friend, Mr. Nick Durham, uh, owner, director of Floston Paradise Toys and also NEMA uh, Toy Company, um, raconteur and fellow plastic crack addict. <laughs> Yeah, and okay. I say, we've got an exclusive this morning because Nick's been involved in selling toys for quite a while, and I say collecting mm. toys, and this is a new venture for Nick, and I know it's something very dear to his heart and something that we are certainly very excited about as well. Um, so Nick, can you tell us a little bit about what is in front of us today and what you've been doing? Okay, yeah. Uh, you are looking at the initial prototype toys, because um, obviously this will be going out after the they've been revealed so you were looking at the initial prototype toys that were revealed about a week ago at um, Toycon in London for the incredible adventures of Duck Boy. Um, the incredible adventures of Duck Boy is our own creation it's our own um, I don't want to say franchise but I suppose it is yeah. a franchise if you like it's our own intellectual property um, and it's something that we've been working on for years and years and years and something that we've kind of now actually taking the plunge and said, no, we're going to do something with this. We're going to actually turn this into something. We're going to create something. We're going to make something. Because um, I think when you talked about selling toys for a couple of years now, um, I've, I've, I've been a toy collector since I was five. I actually mm. did my first YouTube interview with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, like two months before I founded Boston Paradise, two years ago now yeah. it is. Um, and... It's the it's the logical progression for me. It's kind of like you 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 know you do you collect toys, you sell toys. Well, where do you go next? We make toys, but I don't think it's one of those preposterous things that people do where they kind of go, well, I can't make a toy, and it's like, well, yeah, you can. It just it just it just costs a lot of money, and it's and it takes a lot of time and things like that. And um, as I say, we, we've we've been working on on this um, for years where the idea has been there and it's finally kind of come to something and come to fruition and this is what you're now looking yeah, at. You can see this today. Yeah. 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 And they are fantastic figures well, and we'll much. look at those in a bit more detail. Could you tell us that because it's such a weird, it's, we've been following this, obviously you've got the With Facebook the, page yeah. for the Incredible Adventure Duck Boy and that's been an online comic in yes, effect. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I, th I think you've just, the third issue just hit, didn't it? Uh, third issue hit. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I say fourth issue will be out by uh, the middle of March, and when by the time this goes this out, goes this goes out. Issue five probably will have dropped yeah. by that point as well, which is going to be a little bit different and going to change things up slightly. Right. Okay. So, so obviously, if you've not already liked that page, please have a look on Facebook for the Incredible Adventures Duck Boy, and you'll be able to see that online comic and, and see some of these characters. So, yeah. Where, where did that, it's such a weird idea, and we've okay. been following it, and where did it come from? Where was that inspiration from for, for this character, Duck Boy? It came from, yeah, because that was something that a lot of people kind of initially went, huh? It's a cat. cat dressed as a duck. Dressed as a duck that's a superhero. Yeah. Yeah, it, it basically, it's, as we were discussing earlier, it, it, it's, it's actually, it's preposterous, but it's even more preposterous because it has a basis in reality. Right. And that, that's why it's ridiculous, because uh, many, many years ago now, um, I, was, I was in work, and my, my mum phoned me, my mum and dad had their own business, they are um, they're upholsterers, and they'd gone to a, uh, this farm where their wood turner was based at the time, the wood turner that they, they were working with. Um, and my mum phoned me in work and says, there is a, uh, a small ginger cat here at this thing, and I had two cats already at this point. And, um, and I said, okay, right. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not a home for cats, mum, kind of thing. And she went, no, 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 he, he's tiny and he's adorable and he won't leave me alone. And the farmer has basically said that I'm to take him or he's going to get rid of him because there's no, there's no use for him. Right. And I went, oh, okay, bring him home. So this little guy was literally this kind of like little ginger ball of fluff, about this big. And he just completely doted on me, but he was too young to be away from his mother. Right. He was too young, he was like five weeks old maximum. And he got cat flu, because um, he hadn't been weaned or anything like that. Took him to the vet, the vet was like, ah, it's 50-50, and I was like, well, I'm not having that, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing that. I, I've grown quite attached to this little guy. Um, got him through it, but one of the side effects that he developed was, he, he can't me out. He has this, he does one of two things, either opens his, his mouth and no noise comes out at all, right. or he opens his mouth and he makes a quacking sound like a duck. 
Right. right. Where he basically opens and it's like, he makes this weird noise. And over the years, his his name basically became, his name is Pumpkin, but over his, over the years, he basically, he became Duck. Mm. That it was just, it was abbreviated to Duck and that's, that's how it, it kind of came about. And then it was one year, it was about 2012, late 2012, early 2013, and he was being really naughty and he was getting under my feet and getting under my, on my nerves and whatever. And I literally shouted at him, duck boy, like this. And my wife turned around at that point and went, that sounds like the name of a superhero. And at this point, and again, I'm going to apologize in advance for my really bad impression, but I just came out with this thing where I did this awful 60s Batman voice and just kind of went the incredible adventures of Duck Boy kind of thing and it stuck it stuck and we just started I started drawing him and we started like working on these things and it got put to the back burner and yeah. all this kind of stuff and you know I had an issue called an ID you don't do anything with it and but it kept gestating. It kept gestating. And it kept niggling at me, and it kept yeah. kind of doing this and going, "Yeah, but there's something that you could really yeah. do with this, and you could really do it." And and it was only when other things didn't go to plan that you came back. To it then came back to it. Yeah. So I mean, the characters look fantastic, mm -hmm. and obviously these are your prototypes. Yes. So these are the can you talk? Us, obviously, to get to this stage, you've, yes. you've had the comic book and everything as well. You've gone from your idea to to actually getting these panels done. So how did that come about? Who did you? Who did you? kind of get in touch with thinking about that comic because you can draw yourself I know that yes so. yeah I, I mean I but I, I am no I am no comic artist or, or anything like that and and I mean basically it, it came about because we were we were looking at, at this and I was kind of like I, I, I got to do something with this and, and we'd gone through the process of saying you know when you make your own toys um, and this is something I really really wanted to do I really wanted to make my own toys and it was this situation where we, we'd gone around the houses with license oars for, God, six months. I remember you talking to us about yeah. the difficulties involved in yeah. licensing it, for different it, it, products, it, it, different toys, different, 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 different people, different franchises, different license oars, different intellectual property owners. You know, you need a license for this, you need a license for that, you need a license for the other. You know, there was one, one particular foundation that we approached wanted $100,000 to do to do their character, I was like, okay, well that's not going to happen. Um, another license owner, again, I'm not going to mention the name of it, but they basically turned around and said, um, you know, well we don't we own the distribution rights. We don't know who owns the character rights. Mm. You know, if if you want to kind of, you know, just make the toy and see who fires a lawsuit at you first. <laughs> not, like, not the best of plans. No, it was like that, that's, that, 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 that. It was like yeah, they can't really do that. No. So um, when we came back to it. And I actually started to mock these up properly. Um, and my mock-up process is very, very strange. Right. It's very, very strange. Because I basically, I hit Google and I pull down a million different clip art images and, and all this kind of stuff. And I basically sit there for the next three to four hours editing, overlaying, recolouring and stuff in Photoshop. Right. To make what, you thought what, those what I thought that should kind of look like. Um, and we've been working with a, a with a really really talented artist um, from Sheffield uh, called Theo Kane. Right. And um, I got in touch with him, and I said, "Look, it, you know, what about doing this?" And he went, "Yes." I was like, "Fun." And I was like, "All right, okay." And I kind of gave him the influences that we had for this, and I said, "You know, this is influencing, this is influencing this, and this is influencing this." And he said, "Yeah, okay, very cool. Yeah, no problems. I get it. I get where you're going." I sent him my mock-ups, you know, which was always very kind of, you know, because we sent the first script for the for the first comic strip, um, and and my mock-ups of the characters, and said, "What do you think?" And he went, "Yeah, go with this." And and it was about a fortnight later, we started getting images back, like panels, just individual just panels, individual ones, yeah. yeah, back. And it was it was quite something really blown away by by going, oh my God, like that's, that's something, that there are characters, that's something that we created, that's something that's yeah. like, oh my God, that looks like. Yeah. So know. in terms of storyline, did you, did you come up with those initial stories or did you work with somebody else to, to form those? No, no, they're all our own. Yeah. They're all our own. But did you, did you personally write them then? Yes. 
Why not? Yeah, yeah. So that's a, an so even it, more exciting. So you yeah, actually yeah. see your words yeah, so turn into so so the rubbish. It's my fault. <laughs> it is my fault. No, it's uh, it's it's obviously me and my me and my wife own the company, um, and me and my wife are the partners together in in Nima Toys. And yeah, it's us that writes the stories. Yeah. We write the story. Um, I can tell you that the story is actually mapped out at the moment. Uh, as we said, part three dropped. Um, in February, part four drops in March. Part five will just have come out when this when this airs, um, and I can tell you that it is mapped out to part twenty five. Wow! So we've got quite, we've got at least two years worth of double yeah, waiting. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, if people if people want to read it, if people want to see it, the storyline is is mapped out mm. until that point. But, um, but people do want, people really do want to see it because so far it's been. Really successful, it's hasn't it? been well received. Yeah, yeah that, that's the amazing thing because we we didn't go, we didn't approach this like Mattel doing Masters of the Universe, and we're like, you know, oh my god, we need something to counteract Star Wars, and and uh, we need a comic to go with it, and all this kind of stuff. We didn't approach it like that. We approached it that we've got these characters, we we think these characters would make amazing toys, mm. but it's no good just presenting, you know. The, the the mechanized alternate dimension penguin it's no good just presenting that because you've got to give people where yeah. he comes from what what is he why does he look like that yeah. and what's the function of all this and it was kind of like you know the same with with duck boy it's like why does he look like that why has he got the mask because i mean we we've said we we feel it kind of evokes very strong memories of, of franchises that existed kind of mid 80s to late 80s and certainly early 90s i mean i'm thinking things like um uh, certainly ninja turtles completely you know you can kind completely. of see the influence yeah. of eastman and laird uh, oh, well that, they're also you saying go. you know kind of with it within that this sort of these ones where we maybe a bit more random but certainly the figure style and stuff reminded us of kind of japanese anime and also we were saying that the different versions like your plush and your vinyl ones yeah we were saying that there was a big thing in the 80s for kind of when you look at care bears and get along gang yes uh, gummy bears all of those things kind Definitely. of had the, the smaller vinyl figures and then the larger plush and they got that story that built up and you know the comics and the the fan clubs and the every everything yeah, else that yeah yeah that's that's something else so thinking. so in terms of that evoking those memories for people are there any plans along those lines other than the comic book then? yes yeah, so, so kind of, you know, talking about when you were talking about the influences and, and seeing those 80s franchises and stuff like that, one of the things that I find very, very interesting is there is a, a, a lot of people out there where they talk about, you know, this is my time and this is my time and this is my time. And, I, and I'm, I'm a child of 82, so when people talk about, um, you know, influences and stuff, I, I can't genuinely sit there and say Star Wars and, and Tron and Dark Crystal because I, I love those franchises, I love those movies. But they weren't mine, because no. I was born in that year. So when it comes to what influenced me, it's very much real Ghostbusters, Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja, 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 Ninja Turtles, yeah, yeah. yeah, Eastman and Laird, Bucky O'Hare. Those kind of those franchises are what really, really has influenced me. And like you say, I think you can see that kind yeah, of definitely. coming through definitely. in the style of, of what we're doing. Um, it's interesting you should talk about fan clubs as well. Um, because again, by the time this this goes out, we are launching a fan club. Um, but one of the things that we really wanted to do with that was we wanted to do a proper a proper fan club because they don't exist anymore. No. You get an online fan club, yeah, but not like Dennis the Menace or the Beano no, where you get a wallet it, with badges. You know exactly, and that's exactly what we want to do. That's exactly what we are doing. We've launched a fan club, so you 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 go, you subscribe for a year. Um, there's a quarterly mail out which will have a proper printed newsletter Brilliant. in it. Um, you'll get prints, there'll be collector's cards, you're even going to get your own membership card for this thing. There's going to be badges. We're, we're hoping that you know if it's successful enough and we get enough subscribers, we can you know we can offer fan club exclusive t-shirts and we would love to make you know fan club exclusive toys at yeah. some point, which rather than them being just exclusive and saying, all oh, right, it's exclusive and you know, you've got to go to this and you got a lottery number. It's like, all you got to do is sign up to the fan club and like, it's a tiny amount per year and then you can get access to all this stuff. Yeah. 
Um, and people do like to show that loyalty, don't they? Yeah, they do yeah, like, yeah, to, exactly. like to feel part of that bigger thing. Yeah, we've got three um, three storylines that are mapped out um, for the fan club because it's something else that I was very intent that I wanted to do. That we wanted there is going to be an exclusive comic strip in each fan club yeah. um, that is not directly involving Duck Boy. It is part of the storyline. It's part of the back. And almost like the duck verse, I suppose you could call yeah, it. Like yeah, it. Um, it's part of that universe. It's part of the mythology, but and it will tie into the main arc. But he doesn't feature. But if you want to kind of get more, and you have well, what's this and what's this and what's this, there are three storylines, um, which I believe I can tell you the titles okay. of, um, and they will kind of have their own their own unique story, their own comic strips, with their own style. Uh, so there is uh, Marvelous the Magnificent. Okay. Right. Um, there is the rise and fall of the Acre Brothers. Like it. Right. Uh, and Tales from the Shadow Club. Intriguing. Yeah. So there's these three storylines that are all part of the mythology and will all interconnect and will all form part of his universe. But it's whether or not people, you know, we really hope that people yeah. kind of want to. People want to invest in it yeah, and, and feel get, that connection. Get more. Yeah. So talking about DBU, I'm going to coin that for you now. DBU, I love Duck that. Duck Boy Universe. DBU. We know this is Duck Boy. That's Duck Boy. So talk us through these other characters. Okay, all right. So uh, this is, as I say, this is the hero. This is Duck Boy. Um, this lady here, this is Noxter. Um, she is a, a gangster, basically. Um, she has... I can't give away too much as to why she is the way she is because okay. that is going to come out in various different different strips and different comic strips and articles and stuff like that. Um, but she is a gangster. Uh, if you've read the comics up to this point, uh, you'll know that she has three three goons, three henchmen um, who are spider clones. Um, which you know, I was trying to think of something. I'm like, what are two things that I really don't like? Clowns and spiders. Right. Well, let's put those together to create a goon. So she has three henchmen. Um, who are Houdini, uh, Jailbreak, and Chester? Who are the three, the three spider clowns? Uh, and you know, hopefully, if this is successful, we can make, make we can make, clowns, we can make yeah. the spider clowns for you guys. Yeah. Um, this guy on the end here is the Emperor's assassin. Um, he is a, an, well, I'm trying to think of a more articulate way to put this, but it's, he's a ninja bird, basically. Um, a ninja bird word. I think he's, ninja he's, bird. He's, he's a ninja bird. He is the Emperor's assassin. Um, the Emperor, you've not met yet. She's there, you've seen her in the background. Um, there are some bits and pieces where you've kind of, you maybe seen her eyes in strip one and all this kind of stuff. He is her kind of, you know, feathers on the ground at the moment. Um, and he's lethal. He is lethal. Um, and then of course there's this, there's this guy on the end here. Uh, this is Flightless. Um, and he is a, let me get this right now, because it actually says it on the bottom of his schematic t-shirt down there. He is a mechanized Z-dimension bounty hunter. Of course. Of course. What, what else? What would else would he be? What else would he bring? Right? Uh, he is modeled on a penguin. Yeah. Um, but as I say, he is, um, he is a bounty hunter. He has one uh, side of him that is a plasma, one arm um, is a plasma cannon, cannon. the other one is a, is a, is a kind of hook. Um, claw. He has wings on the back. See that there? Where this is kind of rocket pack. He has a sound wave interceptor that's built into his chest. Um, and as I say, he is quite a formidable individual. Um, and it's going to prove it's our he, he's going to prove our heroes some. I think uh, it some reminded problems. me of that kind of, again with your influences. It kind of reminded me of sort of telebugs and things from that sort yeah. of period. And, yeah. You know, kind of um, robots and, and things yeah. from the nineties. It was. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I you know I'll, I'll be completely open and, and honest about this. That as I say, our, our influences are very much based on on things from yeah. than what we grew up with. I mean, you know, because like if you look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the foot. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there's got a lot of influence in there. Obviously, um, you know, in the turtles, it was it was Dimension X. It, he comes from the Z dimension, you know, it's kind of like, it's one of those things, it's like, it, it's an obvious thing yeah. that people are looking at and going, 
Well, is that real? And it's like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it's no, and I think people will appreciate that because uh, yeah, it does it. Like I'm saying, it evokes those strong memories. And so, in terms of the future, what what are where do you see this going? Where where do you where can people actually pick these figures up from? Right. Okay. So uh, if you go to our website, um, which is fbcollectibles.com, which is the Flost and Paradise website, that's our retail store. You can pre-order the full wave now, along with the plush. The plush is due mid to late summer. Um, I don't want to kind of because I don't want yeah. to heighten people's expectations. The vinyl figures, the vinyl action figures, we are looking at late autumn, early winter um, for delivery on wave one. Uh, T-shirts will be available on there. You can purchase those now. And we've got the very cool uh, Comic Noir shirt here and the uh, flightless schematic over there. Which they are very cool. Yeah. We've got quite a few other bits and pieces. We're aiming at some other stuff for later in the year. I think, obviously, if you go to the Incredible Adventures, the Incredible Duck Boy website, it's incredibleduckboy.com, you can read the comic strips online. There is plans for a physical printed version of those comic strips later in the year when we have enough to put together. Yeah. Um, and also, I think, you know, you, there's some links on there to take you through to the retail store if you want to actually, you know, pre-order or, or make a purchase or whatever. I think that the, the thing about the future is there are, as I said earlier, twenty. There are, there's 25 strips that are out there that we have mapped, um, and I think there are 10 fan club strips that are mapped. We want to take this as far as people will let us take it, and for us, it, and for myself individually as well, it's all about. I, w I want these to be successful, not so I can be a millionaire in a, with a jag in a swimming pool. I want to make more of these. There are characters that are coming in these comic strips that go way beyond anything that's here, that this big. Yeah. And I want to make that stuff, and I want to get that stuff out to you. So it's kind of like, as I say, looking at this here, it's like, you know, if you're on board with it and you like it, Go yeah. for it, back yeah. it, because the more people back it, the more you can. The produce. more I can make, yeah. the more can. I just want to make cool things. Yeah, you know. And these are very cool. It's just such a, it's Thank a great much. idea. I'm, I'm really pleased to see that your that initial idea has turned into this, and is, is obviously, I think, is going to be greatly successful. So, mm. I think you're at the start of your own incredible adventure with the adventure of Duckboy. So, Nick, thank you very, very much for sharing thank you guys, with as us always. today. And pleasure as usual, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much.